Hi, I'm Layla Harris, and today I'm going to show you a project I created with the new color of the year and the Operation Smile stamp set. You will find the Change the World stamp set on the back of any of our catalogs. A couple of pages from the back of our core catalog, you will find our color of the year page. This year, we are featuring melon in 10 different ways. We have our inks, cardstocks, reinker, glitter paper, three types of embellishments, as well as sequins. On this page of the catalog, you will see the real star of this card. This is our new Irresistibles cardstock. It comes in six different patterns, and you will see the pattern come alive when you add ink or shimmer brush to it. So you can see here the Irresistible cardstock. It's kind of like white embossing on it, but we call it a UV coating. So what we're going to do is we are going to color this piece of paper with our shimmer brush and it's gonna take on the color and have sparkle. And that, so it's very shiny and very sparkly. So let's get started. I'm gonna zoom back in so you can see my work area a little bit better. And let me grab my brand new melon shimmer brush. And I don't know if you have seen recently, we do now have the names on all of our new shimmer brushes. So the first thing we're going to do is I have a piece of this UV coated irresistible cardstock and we are going to color it and I've already cut it to size here. And we're going to do that with a shimmer brush. And I have this extra piece of paper that I've been stamping on and I'm just going to put that down to protect my regular mat. I'm also going to bring over a block because when you squeeze a shimmer brush, it can puddle and I don't really want to waste it. So I'm going to pick it back up if I um, make a puddle on this. As always, only pull your shimmer brushes, don't twist and that. So if I start coloring with it, it's kind of light because my shimmer brush is a little bit dry because I store them vertically. And so I'm going to give it a little push. And then I'm going to turn it about 90 degrees. I'm going to give it a different, a squeeze at a different direction. There, that's about all we need. And that, and so I am just coloring this cardstock. We're almost painting it with this brush pen and you can see the color come to life. And that. If you go a little too heavy handed, you can warp the cardstock. So I, that's another reason why I don't want to apply the shimmer brush puddle directly to the cardstock because I don't want it to be oversaturated. And you can see that just priming the brush is the hardest part of this whole video. Okay, I'm hoping that I just primed it enough into the bristles since I only have a half inch or so left to color. Ah, that's what I figured. We're going to have lots. Okay, now I'm just going to go back over it really quickly and lightly. Make sure it's kind of like painting. I'm going the other direction. Make sure that I didn't miss anything. That. So I'm going to cap this and put it back in my organizer vertically. And I wrote an M on this one because peach and papaya and a couple other colors are really similar. That. Now I'm just going to grab a tissue. You can use a reusable cloth or a paper towel and you can just wipe across this. And what I'm trying to do is wipe off any excess shimmer brush off of the actual embossed um, surface so that it is back to being bright white. Now I'm just going to set this up here. It might be on the edge of where the camera view is so that it can dry. And let's continue on with our card. So I'm grabbing a card base. 
and I've recently taught my customers that you have this ridge here that's the score line and this is the dimple and this side is the pimple or the mountain so if you hide the pimple or show the dimple it actually folds and lines up a little more easily than if you actually put the raised side out I still go ahead and use a bone folder so that I get a perfectly flat card. It really helps with stamping. Now in this example, I have my stamp and it is about two fingers widths or about an inch from the top. And there's a foliage here and foliage there. And I'm going to try to re do that again. And that this is our new melon color. And I have this on a four by four block. And I'm going across it. I've already used it once today, so it's pretty much primed up. I just want to make sure it's really well inked. And I am going to make sure that my card opens that direction and that the round lobed leaves are there. And this desk surface that is black um, is actually a foam mat. The one of the best things that you can use is a Versa mat that we sell. And that will give you the cushion that you need, especially for a large stamp. So that looks wonderful. Across the top here, I could either do shimmer trim or glitter paper. I chose to do shimmer trim. And what I like to do for my shimmer trim is I have a little scrap of paper here that I was testing pens on. And I am going to put a little piece of adhesive here and it goes from here to here and I'm going to stick the end of this down kind of so there's still some adhesive showing what I really want to do is I want to glue the very tip of this shimmer trim down and that causes me to be able to pull the shimmer trim back really easily so now I can measure out how much I want and stick it down. So last night I had a workshop and I was just cutting pieces of shimmer trim for my guests. And so a lot of times I will have a tail left, but when I'm doing a workshop and just passing pieces around, I might not. So that's why it was cut blunt. But I also thought this would be a valuable tip for you to glue down the end of your carrier sheet onto a piece of paper, even your background paper and that. And you can actually pull this off and some of the adhesive will remain and you can reuse that. Okay, oops, things are going flying. So let's get this up here and I am really going to get in here to make sure that I am covering the top edge. And that's why I flip my card over is so I can see that top edge really well. I don't want any white showing. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to stick it down here and then I'm going to pull it straight and make sure that it's good. And now, and now I can use my nonstick scissors to trim off the excess. And a quarter inch of excess is not a big deal to me. Okay. Now our onto this part and this is our piece. It's pretty close to being dry. If I weren't doing a video, I might have left it longer, but it's not going to harm anything going down with wetness. I am putting adhesive really close to the edges so that it won't work. And that I might have even put a little bit extra adhesive on. So I want my letters to hang below this. And as you see, it is going to keep continue drying until it is a lot less bright and that and there's a couple different ways you can do it you can eyeball it i sometimes will stick this on my paper trimmer and use the grids on that but i think that looks pretty good so now we're going to add the thank and the you and i've already cut them out here 
And so let's just put the U down. And there's a couple of different ways that you can do it. You can use your adhesive, that if it's dot adhesive, if you have a nonstick mat. And my nonstick mat is out in a different room for a different project. So let's just give it a try. I'm just really dabbing on the adhesive. Usually the nonstick mat helps not make a sticky surface here and keeps you from spider webbing your adhesive off the edge of your project. So the great thing about a dot product is that it also, for the most part, most of them are forgiving for a few hours. And so if I hold this up in a couple minutes and go, oh no, my letters are crooked, I can pop them loose and rearrange them, but tomorrow they will be permanently adhered down. So let me hold this up and make sure that I'm not listing or sliding down the hill. I'm going to raise up the Y just a tiny bit. Oh, it's too high now. I don't like the word high. It is easier to get on straight. So there we go. For the word thank, I am going to use my tweezers to pick it up, but I'm going to use some liquid adhesive. And this is the Tombow Mono from our catalog. And I am just going to not even really squeeze the container. I just want to drag whatever bead of it is on the tip out of the bottle. And that because if I get too much on there, it's going to run or it's going to squish out from underneath when I push it down. And that I am trying to cover all of the little highs and lows so that nothing catches on it and raises this up. I'm going to check the first couple to make sure I didn't get them on too, th too thin or too thick. Yeah, this needle applicator is pretty good for that. And so now I have to kind of stand up and work over top of my project and make sure that I have it pretty level. And that I'm going to use the back end of my tweezers that'll keep my fingers from getting sticky and be a little bit more gentle. So next I get to embellish these. This is one quarter of a sheet of the new wood flowers and they are not actually wood. They are paperboard and they are about, let's see, I think about a 32nd of an inch thick. So a, over a millimeter and so much thinner than they used to be when they were real wood and that. And so I'm going to grab this little guy over here. And they're paperboard, they don't have any adhesive on the back. So we're going to just use this again and put some dots. And then I'm gonna smear those dots around. And then for the sake of a little fun and variety, I have one of our new dots that are in the melon color. And we have these in a whole bunch of different colors. And I'm going to grab one of them and put on this card. I like to use an assortment of textures and different types of embellishments more than over many embellishments of the same type. So I have the wood and the enamel, the glitter twice. And now for the last, I have our rose gold um, liquid pearls and that. And what you want to do with this is you also want to prime your tip. And so I'm bringing back my little piece of paper that has the adhesive on it from the shimmer trim. And I'm going to make sure that this is coming out nicely and not curling around the tip like it is. A lot of it has to do with the air bubble because I want to have perfect little 
Hershey Kiss type marks on my card. And that, and after you tap on them, they'll stop being the little kiss shape and just dome over and then be almost flat. But I like to do this on a little scratch piece of paper. And I've been doing it more on a tiny piece that I can quickly throw away versus the corner of whatever piece of background paper I have for my blotter because that way I'm not inclined to keep it for the next project. So I'm doing groups of three and on this example card I did four of them and I got in trouble because people don't like groups of four groups but I thought it still worked. Maybe I'll find a place to put a fifth one. Okay, I think what I'll do is I'll put it right over here. So I only squeeze a little bit and then I kind of pull back. And if I have too much, I can kind of suck it back in. And just by flicking or tapping on the back of the paper, I can kind of get rid of the Hershey Kiss shape from the liquid pearls applicator and now they kind of just look little domes and as they dry they'll flatten out but yet still have a little bit of texture so that's this card and it has lots of fun um, new products on it but one of the most my favorite thing about it is that this card supports operation spile with the purchase of the change the world stamp set seven dollars of this stamp set are going to go directly to Operation Smile. And I think that's a worthy cause. So thanks for watching and follow me and share this video to see more.